Hey, what's up everybody? Every ham has an HD, uh, at least the ones that I know of. Maybe there's a couple oddballs out there that just don't have an HD, but uh, it doesn't matter if you're a technician or all the way through extra, um, you're going to have a, at least one HT. Uh, one of my uh, best buddies, he has like six HTs. Uh, I have three. But um, but this is a quick video kind of showing uh, the importance of the receive part of a receiver. And uh, sometimes price doesn't always uh, determine if you have a, a good uh, HT or not. Um, but when you are shopping for HTs, kind of look at the receive reviews, the reviews about the receive part of the receiver. Because if you had two receivers or two transceivers, one could only transmit, one could only receive, I would choose the one that would receive because I think uh, that is super important. If you can't hear anything, you don't know um, who you're talking to. And, um, but yes, there are a lot of different brands out there that uh, promise a lot of different features. And sometimes if you spend a little bit more money, um, you will get a little bit better radio, but not all the time. But uh, a great YouTube superstar, K5HWB, uh, had said, uh, buy the HT, the most expensive HT that you can afford. And I think uh, that is a good, good starting place because generally speaking, if you spend more money on an HT, um, the chances are that it's going to be a better HT. But we'll get back, I'll get back to you at the end. Right now, I want to show you uh, a video um, talking with uh, two to three transceivers, and we look at the, um, the reception part of it. Now, all of these radios, uh, I've hooked them up to a, a roll up J pole on two meters, and it's uh, the exact antenna is the N9TAX roll-up J-pole, which I'm a big fan of. I have two of them, um, and I've had it outside of my QTH uh, for about three years, uh, all, all through the seasons, and it does really good. But I just take uh, B and C and just uh, take it off one transceiver to the another, so that we kind of do a really cheap, unscientific test. So, all right, uh, hang tight, and I'll get back to you. Okay, so this is a demonstration of uh, how different receivers uh, or transceivers, um, how they receive, the difference in the uh, reception, sh I should say. Uh, the HT on the left is an Anytone 868. It's an older model. It's a DMR and an analog radio. I just use it for the analog and never got into DMR. And the radio on the left is a TYT UV 8000D. And uh, both of them are about the same power. I think this one says it's 6 or 7 watts, but I tested it. It's over 8 watts. And this is a 10 watt radio. It puts out around 9 watts. Does pretty good. But um, the receive capabilities of these two are quite different. And so when you're shopping for a radio, I think how it receives is really important part of uh if you're gonna you know stay with the hobby if it doesn't receive that great you might be a little dismayed but um but yeah we'll have you take a look at uh, or listen to um uh each of these radios there's a net going on right now and a repeater that's about 55 miles away it's on sassafras mountain so we'll uh we'll take a little listen see what it sounds like All right, now let's switch over to the Anytone.
So you should be able to tell a, quite a bit of difference between the reception between the Anytone and the TYT. And uh, I've had uh, a couple other inexpensive radios. Uh, the last one I bought one of the Baofeng UV5Rs <clears throat> and I took it on the back deck with a um, just a just a regular signal stick and I moved it from this radio to this radio to the Baofeng and these are about the kind the difference is kind of what you hear now not so good a lot better and the Baofeng on this repeater didn't even pick it up at all it didn't even break the squelch and uh, when I held the squelch open, no signal. And um, the Baofeng did work because there's a repeater that's about five miles away and it pulled that one in, but it just could not hold a candle to either of those. So when you're shopping for HTs, uh, check out some reviews, see what other people have said about the reception uh, part of it. Now these are both direct conversion uh, rece um, receivers they're not super heterodyne or anything but not all direct conversions are created equal as you can hear now so we'll, I'll do another back and forth on this repeater please check in November 4 Alpha Sierra Whiskey N4 ASW Tony also my wife Kilo Quebec 4 Juliet Sierra Kilo KQ4 JSK Kim we're located in Nashville we'll be negative and negative So you can definitely tell the difference between the two. The uh, Anytone 868 just smokes the uh, TYT. And um, some days it's even more prevalent. Some days it's just you can't even hear any enough to check into the net if you wanted to. But the Anytone is just uh, uh, way ahead of it. And uh, I'm going to hang around. There's another net at 9 p.m. It's about the same distance. But uh, I want to do uh, another back and forth test. So... Uh, Stand by. All right, so we are back, and this net in uh, on Caesar's Head Mountain in South Carolina is about to start up here at about one minute. So I wanted to bring these two radios back, and uh, we'll do an A B between the receive side. Now the distance from that other repeater that I tested is about the same. They're just slightly, slightly different directions, and. Uh, so I'll go ahead and turn this up. And any second now. And also after we do tests with these two, I'm going to do, I have a special little radio I wanna bring in. I'm curious to see how it receives too. Um, I'll give you a little little teaser here. It's a GMRS radio that um, I got from my wife so we can uh, talk on GMRS. And it only transmits on GMRS, but uh, it receives on um, um, ham, ham uh, frequencies just fine. So that's a good thing. So let's see. Let me turn this up a little bit. And should be like three, two, one. We should be getting there we go. Now you can already tell I'm getting worse reception on this repeater than the other one. And uh and this one was a better radio, so when we switch to this one, we'll see see how nasty it is. Is there any formal traffic bulletins or announcements for the net? Please call KI4 
All right, let's switch it over. Let's let him talk again. So you can tell, big difference. So yeah, they're right there. The uh, the reception on different direct conversion HTs can be dramatic, and there's no way of really knowing unless you maybe someone tells you or you really good at uh, skimming through reviews to get the pertinent information. But uh, yeah, when you read reviews on radios. Uh, pay attention to what the reception side sounds like. But I'm curious to know, this radio here, this is the GMRS radio I was talking about. It is the Radioddity GM30, which is like a $30 GMRS radio. And like I mentioned earlier, it only transmits on GMRS, but you can receive on ham bands, 2 meter and 70 centimeter, and you can even listen to FM radio on that if you want. But let's, uh, I have this repeater turned on to the radiotity, so let's just kind of switch around and see what things sound like. Okay. We'll turn this anytone back up. And JC4W, that's Mr. Bill, he's over in Anderson. And KO4CEW. Already, that radiotity doesn't sound half bad. Uh, it's not too far behind the anytone. Uh, that completely audible. Uh, happy with that, the way it sounds. Let me turn the uh, GM30 up, and then we'll switch it back over to the TYT. Here comes the Echo Link station. It might be pretty low in volume. We'll see. It's a very rough copy on that TYT. So yeah, the TYT, you know, when you go and shop on Amazon and you're reading the, the features like 10 watts, yeah, I want 10 watts. It does a crossband repeater, yeah, it, has, it must be a great radio. And I think that cost me like 80 bucks uh, when I got it a few years ago. But um, what good does the, uh, the crossband repeat fun uh, function do if it, it can't receive that great? So. You know, it's all these things you have to take into consideration. So let's do another swap from the TYT to the Radioddity, and then we'll finish up going back to the uh, 868. It's amazing that this radio, I don't know, I can't remember, must be like 160, 180 bucks when it was new a couple years ago. This one's 80 bucks, and this one's $30 or $33. And uh, as far as reception goes, this one just blows away this one. I mean, hands down, it's just a way better receiver, um, night and day to me. So from least to worst to best, it goes 
in this direction, but these two aren't too far out from each other. Okay, so let's uh, do a final roundup here. We're gonna go from right to left. And I think this is, um, like I mentioned earlier, worst to best. So let's do another pass and let's take a listen to the receive side on these different HTs. So that is uh, just a kind of rundown on some of the HTs that I have and showing the difference in the receive capability. And uh, so as you're searching for an HT, uh, do pay a little attention to the reviews on how it receives because it can make the difference between making a uh, hearing enough to make a contact or not. All right, well, there you have it. Uh, there's a little surprise in there. The most inexpensive uh, HT even though it was a GMRS radio, it had great reception. Uh, the Any Tone, for sure, was uh, a great radio. The, the very first HT I ever bought was a Baofeng Tri-Band. It was one of the, it was red, and it had, uh, um, it was Tri-Band, uh, two meter, uh, the 1.25, and then uh, 70 centimeter. And um, it's, it, it was my first radio, so I had nothing to compare it to. If I heard uh, the reception from a repeater or a signal, I didn't know if it was good or bad. I could just tell I could hear it okay or it's staticky. I just thought, well, it must be my antenna. But it's not always your antenna. It can be your radio itself. And uh, when I got the, the Anytone uh, 868. I bought it because I thought I might be interested in DMR, which I'm not interested in DMR, um, I found out. But uh, I'm not stuck with this useless radio. The analog capability on the uh, Anytone is absolutely awesome, in my opinion. And then um, I wanted to get another HT, so I got the TYT. And uh, because it was powerful and 10 watts, and it also had crossband repeat feature and then over time just playing with different radios different days i noticed that the tyt just did not receive uh, like the anytone not even close so i've been wanting to make a video like this to kind of show the two i wish i had a ton of hts to test but um not only did the tyt do a poorly against the anytone but the gmrs radio the 30 dollar this guy right here the gm 30 um the reception on this just blew the TYT away. So, um, so when you're shopping, definitely do the reviews and make sure you're listening to um, what people talk about with the receive capabilities. Now, there's some brands of receivers that I would just probably just get um, because I just feel confident that it's going to be a quality product. And some of those are the bigger uh, priced items, which include Gesu, Kenwood, ICOM. And then uh, some of the other Chinese radios, you get the BTEC and the Anytone. And then it kind of starts going a little downhill. Uh, you got the Radioddities, which is the Radioddity that I used, which I had really good luck with it. And then, uh, but then you kind of get these other radios that have different names. They kind of look like each other. And uh, 
like the uh, TID radio and Redivis, they kind of look like Radiodity, like they might be in the, made in the same factory, and Radtel, and uh, of course TYT. But uh, since my experience with TYT, there's, I'm sure there's some TYT owners out there that are just completely happy with their the radio and maybe I just got a dud who knows but uh, you know when you experience a radio like that and that reception is like that it just kind of leaves a bad taste in your mouth and when I am shopping for radios uh, I was even shopping for a mobile radio when I saw the TYT I'm just like ah, I'll just keep scrolling so who knows but um, but I'm not done buying inexpensive radios of course the uh, hot one right now is the Quan Shang I got it written here the Quan Sheng UV5, I think it is, the one that everyone's um, tricking it out with different firmware and stuff. That sounds fun. It's under 30 bucks. Uh, I don't have big expectations on how it's going to receive, but you might be surprised. The, this $30 radiator surprised me, so who knows? But uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. More are coming out, and more might make more sense in this one. <laughs> but uh, thanks for checking it out. 7 3, everybody.